Good morning, everyone. I know that the school off this week, and thank you for coming. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about dynamic stall phenomena in wind turbines, and also I will introduce some uh, solar application projects. Uh, I will start with a brief introduction about dynamic stall. And the other thing that which is important for dynamic stall is calculating the aerodynamic loads during dynamic stall. We have experimental setup and numerical setups that I'm going to explain to you. And then I will try to explain how to control the dynamic stall using aerodynamic loads. For the second part of the talk, I will give you some actually, uh, I will present some small projects about the solar applications. Uh, dynamic stall has good side and bad side. For a good stall, you can see birds love dynamic stall. They can get the advantage of dynamic stall and it boosts their flights. But dynamic stall is not good for wind turbines. In serious cases, it causes so much problem for them. And in this figure, you can see it actually bended the actually wings. The main reason of the dynamic stall is the uh, yaw loads. But when the actually a rotor of the wind turbines experience yaw loads, the main reason is the wind disturbances. Here you can see the wind is not uniform. For this figure, the wind has an angle with the rotor. And for this one, we have a shear wind. That means the actually wind is not uniform at all. And for the very serious turbulent cases, it's very hard to get a wind pattern from the wind. That's why the rotor is not balanced. The load is different in different location of the rotor. And this caused the problem. For example, here, you can see the wind has an angle with the wind turbine, right? And then we have another velocity component here. Each element of the uh, blade has two velocity components. One is the inlet flow, the other one is the rotational flow, which is the uh, r omega. And these actually components, it affects this r omega velocity. And during the operation, during one turn, the value of it is changing. Therefore, you can see the angle of attack and the resultant velocity is changing. But the good news is that for each oscillation, these changes are actually, can be modeled, this uh, actually, there can be modeled uh, sinusoidally. As you can see, angle of attack and the uh, inlet velocity are modeled based on these equations. Um, oscillating angle of attack are studied in the literature very well, but usually the oscillating uh, uh, velocity is ignored. And in the future, I will tell you that uh, this has so much effects on the results. And the oscillations are at the same frequency, but with the phase difference of phi. Okay. Uh, when the rotor is under yaw loads, we show that the airflow is not static anymore. It's oscillating, it's dynamic airflow. Therefore, the aerodynamic loads are changed. This curve shows the static results of an airfoil. For the design of a wind turbine, we use these static results. As you can see here, we designed the airfoil based off, based off this load. But when the airfoil is dynamic, the stall is delayed. And here, you can see the delay is at point E. We have, here, we have a static stall. At, when the, actually the uh, uh, airfoil is oscillating at point around this area, a small vortices are generated in the leading edge. And during the actually upstroke, they are growing. And the pro and uh, these uh, vortices, which is called leading edge vortex, uh, has a very low pressure values, which cause the significant lift here. 
And when the stall happens, this vortex uh, actually separated from the airflow and will go to the big wake. And after that, the lift is decreased significantly. And you can see here, the load is actually is so much high here. We designed the airfoil, we designed the wind turbine based on this load, but when we have the dynamic stall, you see we have this huge actually lift value. That's the problem, which causes the problem for the wind turbines. And that's why we try to actually prevent the wind turbines from having dynamic stall. It's a very big issue for wind turbines and actually controlling them is very cost effective. Here you can see a small or quick uh, uh, movie of this dynamic cell. Leading edge vortex is generated here and is growing and then is leaving the airfoil and the airfoil is going back to down a stroke. These, a small, these actually big vortices cause the dynamic stall. And here the flow is again attached to the airfoil. Uh, to study dynamic stall, the most important part is studying the aerodynamic loads. Here in the University of Waterloo, uh, we, uh, actually I, we have a great lab in Professor Johnson's group. Uh, I took uh, some uh, particle image, image velocimetry data uh, from the experimental setup that we had, and also I took some LDA and data. And uh, with this data, actually, we use a specific technique which is called control volume approach. It's a very new technique. Just small, just a few universities uh, have these codes, and we develop these codes. And using this code, we could calculate all the aerodynamic loads for the dynamic case. And also, we have a numerical simulation. Um, here, around the airfoil, we generated C-type mesh, and we oscillate the whole grid to actually uh, simulate the uh, oscillating airfoil. Also, for the inlet velocity, we use a UDF function to oscillate the inlet velocity as well. The problem with this, actually, uh, this mesh was that because the whole uh, domain was oscillating. The boundary conditions were, was actually limited. We cannot use all the boundary conditions. And here you can see a comparison between the experimental results and numerical results. The actual comparison were very good. And also both methods could capture all the uh, dynamic stall features. You see here they both can capture two peaks of the lift values here. And also, uh, I should mention the numerical simulation is slightly uh, under predict the simulation, but the, both can capture all the, all the features. And also, the, here, the PIV uh, um, shows the dynamic stall very well. As you know that, close to the surface, it's very hard to take the images. And uh, I have a great, actually, grad students here. Some of them are here. They really helped me to take all these images, and we could develop all the results, and we published them. And here, for the honesty velocity that we talk about that, uh, we, for different fee values, I'm not going to talk about all the details of these figures, but the only thing that I want to show you is that when we have the honesty free stream, you see here, we have extremely high loads in some cases. And for some cases, the load is damped significantly, as you can see. And sometimes the location of the maximum load is changed. For example, here. Instead of being here, it's here. This causes so many problems in our design. That's why we cannot actually ignore the effects of the oscillating free stream. But usually, in the, most of the studies, 
is ignored because of the problems for the experimental setup and also for the numerical setup. And here, just the, uh, each, this figure just shows the vertical structure. Again, for different fee values, which shows the effects of the anesthesia free stream, you can see the size of the leading edge vortex for some cases are very really small, and for some cases is very huge. That's, our, that's why the actual results are affected significantly. Uh, the, one of the recent work uh, that I have done uh, recently is actually working on the numerical simulation. As I mentioned, we have some limitation for the boundary conditions. Uh, for this study, we try to use uh, actually a slide mesh. Here, the in uh, actually this domain with airfoil can oscillate, and this domain can be constant. And the good news for this one is that we can have come on uh, boundary conditions. But the problem is that for this case, because we wanted to have just two mesh layers, uh, we try to use O-type mesh. But the problem for the O-type mesh is that close to the tails, the skewness factor is very huge. And that's caused so much problem. And we actually use a specific technique to, actual, to solve this problem. And the results were really good. And you can see here the comparison. Uh, this figure shows both numerical methods and the agri, and also they can capture all the dynamic style features. Another thing that I have started working on it is um, getting the uh, power from the wind turbine when we have dynamic stall. We know all the loads, everything, but we don't know the, how it affects the powers. Uh, we have a, a wind turbine simulator is in University of Shahid Beshti, is for the teaching purpose, uh, but because uh, it's very easy uh, to control the, all the experimental setup, we, we use this one for the for a study, and we actually put the rotor under yaw loads, and then we can extract the information of it. Uh, but uh, when we actually started working, we noticed that we took this measurement with hot wire from the fans of the simulator, and we noticed that uh, we should uh, actually change the, uh, you know, change the size of the rotor of the wind turbine because of the fan, and then we the design a new blade based on element momentum, element, uh, blade element momentum, and then we have built it recently, and right now we are taking the new measurements from the results. Uh, about the controlling dynamic stall, I mentioned that dynamic stall caused so much problems for the wind turbines, and the. Uh, the common methods for controlling it is, one of them is turning the tower, and the other one is shutting down the system, and all these methods are very expensive. I always think, uh, thinking about how we can use aerodynamic loads for controlling the dynamic stall. And one of my students took this picture, and you can see here, the bird very nicely changed the camera of its wing. And it, it seems that he's using this technique to improve his flight. And then we were so much interested in this study. And we found this actually paper, which has been published recently. It shows during the flight of bats, you see during when you see the flight during upstroke and downstroke, so many things are happened. For example, the wing can oscillate, the one that simulated before, or the wing can have a change the camber, or can bend it, and in some cases, the size can change. And in some cases, when the size of the wing is changed, also the Mm, cross section of the wing is changing too. We tried to use some of these features and we simulated it 
and the result was this. You see here, is the static results we are going to actually design the wind turbine, right? And is the results of the dynamic stall of the same airfoil? And then we modified the airfoil. We took exactly the same static stall results, but which was interesting, we took the dynamic stall results here. And you see when the airfoil is under dynamic stall, the lows are very close to the static value. And that's why probably we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have any problems. And we are going to draw, develop this idea in the future to control the wind turbines. Uh, about the second part of my talk, actually when I come back here to Waterloo, uh, many people ask me about the renewable energy projects in Iran, and they were very excited about, to know about that. And uh, that's why I arranged this part of the talk. I thought maybe it will be interesting for some of them. Uh, you know, everyone knows that energy in Iran is very cheap. We have gas, we have oil, everything, and no one cares about energy and convinced the government and the companies to actually put money for these renewable energies is really hard. But recently there are some companies that are very interested because as you see here in Iran, uh, we have so much capacity of installing wind turbines here. Actually the red part shows the high actually winds which is suitable for wind turbines. We have around, uh, I think, 15 wind farms in Iran, uh, but for the solar part, you see Iran is really have a high potential of using solar energy. In average, we have 290 days, 290 sunny days, which is very good for actually solar energy. And, um, but because of all the economical problems, because of, I mean, LCO, uh, we don't have so much uh, energy, uh, so much solar uh, power plants. Uh, but recently, some of the companies are very interested. And uh, I'm going to introduce one of them. One of them is the Mapna Group. It's a very big company. Uh, he has, his work is to installing power plants uh, in many countries and many small companies are working under this company. And uh, recently, and one of the wind farm in Iran was installed with this company. Recently they are developing their own R&D for the wind turbines. And you know, they, have, they are they're very rich, they can, you know, spend money so much for our, their R&D and is a good news for people who are working in uh, renewable energy in Iran. Uh, the competition, they re recently they, uh, their company uh, is fo founded a competition in the Iran and uh, the competition was uh, to call the 50 liters water uh, actually up to seven degrees, just using the solar energy. And probably the team who can uh, cool the water faster will be the winner. Around 40 teams uh, were participating in this uh, actually competition. Uh, the competition was in three stages. Uh, I had a group with my undergrad students there and we passed two stages. And the last one is the uh, next month and we hope that we can get it. And here is the actually uh, our uh, design for the solar cooling system. Um, and uh, right now, just seven uh, groups uh, are in the stage three and we received the money from the company. We are building this and we are ready, hopefully next month, for the competition. The idea behind this competition is that university wants to actually, sorry, uh, the map now wants to get the uh, ideas 
from the actually different groups uh, because uh, they are going to make a commercial solar cooling system and they want to use one of these ideas and they hope to actually it will be successful for them. Uh, another project is the actually solar car in University of Tehran is called Ghazal 3, is the third generation of the solar car here. And here you can see the car in front of the, it's the entrance of the University of Tehran. And is the, actually the team who are working on it. Is the, this project is supervised with uh, Professor Karen uh, Abrinia. And um, uh, many companies are funded this uh, project. And last year, uh, they went to the um, Australia for a race and um, they passed all the actually everything and uh, it, they were in the cruise cruiser class for uh, wheels with two seats. And uh, uh, based on the S speed, uh, this actually car was the third one in the competition. Is the maximum speed was 130 kilometers per hour. Yeah, it was good. And the average was 80 kilometers per hour in the race, and but this one is 130 kilometers per hour. It has the second, actually the third position. And uh, right now the car has a tour in Iran from the north to south, from the Caspian Sea to the Persian Gulf, which is around 2,000 kilometers. And for two reasons. One of them is that they want to actually attract other companies to actually get more funds because they are making the new generation of this car to make it more uh, actually commercial, you know, to sell it to other companies. And the other thing is that this tour is changing the mind of the people. People in Iran don't believe that we can use the solar energy or any renewable energies for their everyday use, for their cars, for everything. Because, you know, energy is very cheap. They have it for years and they don't care about it. And it has a very good impact on the people. Here you see the people are around the cars. It's the actually Isfahan, is the a very famous uh, bridge in Asphalt Steel Sepal. And uh, you can see they ask many questions and they are very interested and say, okay, is possible to use the solar car? And, uh, and just recently, some of the students just sent me this. Uh, and if it, oh, how can I decrease the... Oh, here, okay. That's it. <laughs> and thank you for actually your attention. The students are having a good time. <laughs> yeah, of course. But they work very hard. They sure. work, yeah, it's good for their, actually. Because actually they are making everything without any actually using any other helps from the other companies. You know, they get the funds, but they are making everything from the scratch. It's a good experience for them. A huge number of students are involved in this project. And I think that's good for them. And even for the solar cooling uh, project that I had, it was very interesting. We designed and actually we are making the 
system, building it, just for a few months. It's a huge work, and they are working very hard. It's amazing. So I guess uh, we are open for questions. I'd like to ask about the, uh, the your final two slides on the uh, uh, aerodynamics of wind turbines. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go to it? You showed various techniques to modify the uh, wind turbine profile, camber changes, length changes, etc. Uh, right there, yeah. And then on the next slide, or pardon me, and on the bottom you show the effect, and mm -hmm. on the next slide you said here's a modified S809, mm -hmm. but you didn't tell me how you modified it. Yeah. Or is that something that you're no. not prepared to fully talk about? Yeah. You know, because this idea is under publication, we are actually, we are applying for actually, okay. yeah. I That's why I can't that go be. through the details, but I want just to convince you that it's possible to use aerodynamic, actually, con you know, to control the system aerodynamically, so we which has, we, we haven't we done have before. Yes. <laughs> 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 to be honest with you, in our initial meeting, uh, we decided to give a glimpse but we're sure. not going to the details. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. uh, my apologies for that. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Uh, uh, you know, protecting intellectual property is very important uh, uh, to all of us. Uh, more questions? Nothing. But uh, well, I was curious as a, as a prof, not so much as a researcher, about uh, uh, how do the students get credit for their solar car work? I mean. Uh, is that a fourth year project uh, mm -hmm. that uh, they get a credit for? You know, the best credit for them is it will be in their resume. You know, uh, for example, some of them are designing the, with SolidWorks. And I remember, because we have a, something similar to co-op system here, but for one term. Sorry, for two terms. And uh, I introduced some of my students to very good companies, and they asked me, Okay, what's their experience? And I send them, okay, they are working in this team. And they say, okay, I, I will hire them for this period. You know, this, it gives them credit, but the, actually all the funds that the uh, MC Professor uh, Abrinia gets from this um, project, unfortunately goes through building this system. They cannot actually pay these students, but the students are really eager to work with him. Because it's a good experience for them. They learn a lot. And the project was very successful. Here, here in Waterloo, we, we've, uh, across all departments in engineering now, we have the fourth year project. I know, for yeah. Two, two terms, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know, you've worked with some of the students. Yeah, we have the same in Iran. Yeah. Does the uh, gazelle work? Uh, for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. Okay, if so they have something new for this project and they, yeah. this so just they, their own so, work, so yeah. So for the most part, then they will they can get some work. academic credit yeah. for their work. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. Uh, I have a quick question for you. Uh, when it comes to University of Waterloo, we have a very unique IP policy that the inventor owns the technology. What about uh, the universities in Iran? Same policies, or is it a bit different? I'm not sure what's the policy in university. I don't know the details of the University of Waterloo. Oh, the part. Of yeah, the it's part. basically the grad student and the professor. Uh -huh. uh, they own the technology, they own the research, they own the product, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken, Maurice. Mm -hmm. So, what's the policy in Iran? Uh, any idea? <sighs> Most, most it's, universities in North it's America. It's the same, yeah. I so think it's the Most universities in North America, the university claims mm -hmm. one third or 50%, or in some cases, 60%. Of, uh, of the IP, of the intellectual property, generated from research that goes on mm -hmm. on campus. Okay. So if Yuri comes up with, a, with a, a new technique for carbon dioxide sequestration at Waterloo, he owns 100% of it. But if he was working at Stanford, Stanford would own 60%. Oh, So I that's see. the question. Mm -hmm. Because that's one reason that people point to when they say Waterloo is very innovative because they give the opportunity for them because the professors to, and the yeah. students own 100% of the hundred percent oh I see that's why I really asked the question honestly I'm not sure about that in self Tehran's policy uh, it, it will arise 
in the future if there are joint projects. Mm -hmm. Because in order to have a joint project, the IP policies have to be very clear. Clear for and, both universities. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I should ask them and you should just, you just find us. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure about the details. Yeah. Of, co of course, you here at Waterloo, if, if you reinvent something, he might be working with the company. And he okay. might say, okay, fine, it's my patent, but I. I'm working with another I, company. I allocate, yeah. I allocate the IP to the company. Okay, so that happens to me a lot. So I have mm -hmm. this company otherwise would not give money. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So I have a, you know, I have uh, companies that I work with, and uh, occasionally what I've what I've done is, uh, well, they've always paid for the patent. That's and in, good. In yeah. And for that and support of students, then basically they have the non-exclusive rights to use the patent, or in mm -hmm. some cases the exclusive right. Mm -hmm. So these things, uh, as Iran opens up to the world. Uh, more mm -hmm. in the future, uh, these things are going to be more important, important especially yeah. for a university of Tehran, which is the you know the leading technological university in, uh, in Iran. Iran. I'm sure, I'm sure the administration is thinking very carefully about, about this uh, stuff. Yeah, I didn't go through these details, you know, because I have been here for nine months and just I try to prefer the lectures and do a lot of jobs, and I didn't notice that one. But uh, you're right, I should be actually more confident about all these steps and I should talk to them and find out more details. So, so here at Waterloo, if, if I work with a student and I say, well, look, you know, we're working with this company and we're going to have to blah, 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 IP, the student has to agree to that. If the student says no, then we have to come up with a different deal. So in other words, we're protecting the rights of the student as well, mm -hmm. as much as we can. Okay, good. Uh, more questions? Okay, so Akubra, thank you so much for your no time, problem. and I welcome you back to the family of University of Waterloo. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. It's nice to Thanks. see you again. Thanks.